my name is Sherelle Eid, and as already has been told, I'm a PhD student in the final month right now, Delft University of Technology. And I uh, wrote uh, together with the co-authors uh, this part for the upcoming book, and it's called Global Trends in the Political Economy of Smart Grids. And as I knew that the audience might be very from a very broad uh, background, I would first want to start with what is a smart grid. So it has to do with electricity supply, but, and the grid refers here to the electricity grid, but a smart grid can be defined as electricity networks that enable two-way communication and power exchange between consumers and producers, utilizing IT to respond and management demand and ensure safe and secure electricity distribution. So, the electricity network normally can be, def uh, the, the network itself can be uh, defined between uh, the transmission and the distribution grid. And normally the transmission grid already has IT systems in place, which ensure that in real time, there's a constant balance between electricity supply and demand. However, smart grids are actually inviting towards this innovation on the distribution side so that electricity consumers, producers, local PV panels, EV units would all be interacting in real time with the supply and, uh, and demand of electricity available. However, from a policy perspective, this term has actually taken a whole wide uh, usage. So it, it can be seen as a necessity to go towards smart grid because it can then a grid can then integrate much more renewables because it will be in real time reacting to the availability of sun or wind. It could make sure that there's an efficient use of the sources in the grid, so efficient use of the electricity supply, but also of the network capacity, and it would ensure reliable supply. I will, this, this actually, these parts are for me the major issue that I want to discuss is how is this from a policy side used differently, the terminology of smart grid? Because uh, as I said, it, it can be seen as this interaction of a local grid between different resources. And the three main uh, in elements in the smart grid are a smart meter, which is a meter which is actually in real life monitoring the consumption of a household and it can uh, it can send this information towards um, towards a, a retailer for example to see how much cons electricity is consumed then resources and then there is the real-time management of those this devices an important term here is the term demand response which you might hear a lot because demand response is actually this interaction that takes place in a smart grid. So when I send a price signal to you of a high price and you're responding to that, that's demand response because you're then responding to the, the, uh, the scarcity of electricity available in the grid. However, not only electricity consumers, but also storage units um, and local production units could respond. And therefore, I normally use the term flexibility, the flexibility of, electric, of uh, electricity, electric flexibility, instead of demand response, because it's a wider term. But um, it is just a term which is used more in policy. So coming back to this issue, so uh, smart grids are used in many ways because it's such a broad term. It's a, it's, it's a technology advancement which can be defined in many ways that you could almost say like wherever there is a crisis, we just put a smart grid and it will solve the problem. <laughs> but um, I would like to question that right now. So I go through the stru structure that is just like that. Uh, I would shortly talk about the history of the use of this term and then define how in the US and Europe and in China, these developments have been taking place in the smart grid domain. And how this can be a learning, a lesson for, for other places, but also in the developing world, how can the smart grid be applied? And then I will end with some rec recommendations. So the history of this term is actually the functionality of a smart grid is actually really old already. In 1981, uh, Professor Schweppe and uh, co-authors wrote about the functionality, which is actually exactly the same as we know it today. Uh, an electric grid that can uh, support interactions between supply and demand with local markets, 
efficient use of electricity networks and supply that was already described in 1981. However, only from uh, 2005, this term smart grid came up and it was because of an, a researcher who wrote uh, towards a smart grid power delivery for the 21st century. And in, this, uh, in his document, he described how we can uh, relate an electric, electric network to an F-15 aircraft with self-healing possibilities. So this, this, this integration of IT in the electricity supply. And in 2007, this word and the naming of smart grid is, has been used in the US Energy Independence and Security Act in 2007. In Europe, it was in 2006, they uh, defined the smart grid in a report where they actually gave a vision for energy of the future. But in 2012, in the Energy Efficiency Directive, actually there has been a, a statement of fixing 80% uh, of smart meter investments for 2020. So it says, has been proposed that the country should have 80% smart meters invested in 2020. And in uh, China, in 2011, uh, the five-year plan for national economic and social development has discussed this term smart grids as well. So you see th there is, it's, it's a nice term, it's a nice, we rather go for smart grids than dumb grids. So, but uh, what does it mean and how can we use it and how does the industry structure, which is so important here, define how a smart grid is applied? Because you can have um, a general electricity supply chain is always production, transmission, system operation, that means uh, keeping electricity supply and demand always in balance and then distribution and retail. So in a, in a system where everything is owned by just one utility, that's called a vertical integrated model, um, that means there is no competition and uh, there can be issues of course there with efficiency because this one monopoly can define any price and the consumer just has to pay because they're dependent. So, the, another model is the single buyer model. And uh, that means that there are multiple producers of electricity, but there's one public utility, for example, a local utility, which buys electricity from different suppliers. So there's already a little bit more competition in this model because we make sure that the producers are paid, which are giving the lowest price in every moment in time. So that is already an, an improvement. This model is right now in, in China uh, existed and used. Then in, in the United States, this model is applied in many places. It's the wholesale competition model, meaning that there can be multiple buyers and multiple sellers trading electricity and then um, forwarding it to a public utility, which can be local in an area in place, a municipality utility, or it could have another name. And in Europe, it's even further. We have the retail competition model in, in electricity, meaning that every, even the, the consumers are able to choose a retailer. So, and also in some places in the United States, the last model is applied. But in Europe, this is by regulation necessary. So why do I discuss these models? Is because they are actually defining the rules of the game for smart grid investments. So I would like to go into that. So in an integrated utility, as I said, most present in US, also in China, um, demand response, so when, when there, is, uh, electric, there are signals give, given to, for uh, consumers to respond, this can be directly used for their internal business uh, model, so for reducing network constraints, uh, re reducing costs for their supply. However, when there is a distribution service operator, and these are these distribution service operators are just focused on their part of the network. They don't care about retail prices or how high the prices of electricity. They would use the demand response just for reducing the network uh, investment needs. 
And um, so electricity retailers, which are only focused on markets and on reducing their risk in markets, would use these flexibility of consumers for risk reduction. And differently aggregated, which are a new kind of uh, uh, actor in the electricity supply chain, these actors are actually giving signals to a group of consumers in order to trade their flexibility in central markets. So these are actually new actors that come up because they see this business model that's coming up. And consumers can be more engaged. They can see real time what they're consuming. They can have more insight in what price changes that happen. And therefore, if you see a smart grid, there can be different type of investments and design from a technical and institutional perspective. And these different actors that can be involved. And it depends all on the industry structure. So as I said, the way the industry is designed, uh, the roles that they're, they're given to different actors, the regulatory model and how energy policy has also have been discussed by Suro, how energy policy is stringent or not. So if I go over this, this three countries, so USA, what we can see there is that the, the smart grid investment started there just the talk about it because of grid reliability problems in 1984 to 2006. The, the, rate, the regulatory model applied there is cost of service for many utilities or rate of return. That means that the utilities get paid what they are meant to invest in. There is not really uh, too much focus on becoming more efficient. Uh, and in uh, 2009, the smart grid investments, uh, actually mostly smart metering investments, jump-started because of um, uh, 4.5 billion made available for metering for smart grid investments. However, most utilities just invested in metering. And it's for me questionable whether that actually is a smart grid because you just have a meter but you don't give a signal for the user to become more efficient with the system. And um, what right now is a problem is how to deal with many distributed energy resources, so uh, local PV and CHP or uh, EV units that are being connected to the grid. These ca cause a lot of tension in the local networks. And this seems to be a bigger problem than, oh, we want to do a smart grid. So that's right now more of an issue in the US than moving towards a holistic use of a smart grid vision. In Europe, the, the push towards smart grid was mostly to move towards sustainability. I think also re, uh, towards independence and affordability. But the regulatory model for many utilities is incentive-based regulation. That means that, for example, the DSOs are incentivized to every year reduce their expenses and to show that they're really efficient in their operations. However, this means that sometimes, no, not sometimes, many times smart grid investments are not of their interest because it would increase their expenses. And um, smart grid investments are both of uh, capital expenditure and operational expenditure nature. So, um, and it's a big question, what would be the role of a DSO in such a smart grid uh, environment? Differently in China, there, the, this talk about smart grids jump started because of this extreme growth of electricity demand and the pollution issues. So they thought we have to really move towards renewables, but the grid cannot handle that if we are just going on in the same way that we do. And also there, there is a rate of return uh, regulation and there has been some quite impressive uh, developments, but mostly on the high voltage transmission grid. So there has been, um, and the funny thing is they use the term smart grid, they're actually referring mostly to the central grid expansion, but there is also an EV car uh, fleet uh, development, which has to do with this pollution issues that they wanted to, to reduce. And these EVs, yeah, they have no pollution, so these are therefore uh, an interesting option. However, smart metering is not really of an interest in, in China. So if I just give you an overview, this is just what I just uh, a little bit discussed about, that we can actually see that smart grid investments and uh, interests are very different depending on industry structure, depending on the regulation, 
And uh, for example, in Europe, it's, it's very difficult to define what would be the role of the distribution service operator, because with a smart grid, um, this, this, this distribution service operator has, might become a monopoly actor having access to electricity consumption data. And that we, we, will yeah, create maybe problems with what will be uh, their role, uh, towards uh, retailers and will they have then, uh, they have a beneficial uh, position towards retailers. So this is an, uh, an important aspect for Europe, but I would like to move towards a little point on India. So in the developing world, as has been discussed, we don't have really this big stranded investment cost that we in Europe or other places have. So small uh, investments, uh, smaller units like PV units might actually already be very interesting for those de for developing uh, electricity in unelectrified rural areas. So in India is actually a nice place to already observe how they move towards smart grids because they they approved in 2013 a national smart grid mission and uh, there are right now 10, I think even 12 smart grid pilot projects running from the national grid and where they really wanted to want to use interactions with um, IT and electricity supply with renewable sources. However, what is important to keep in mind is really in sustainable long-term business models for those smart grids. Because if you just put down a grid, put down some panels, but don't support the investment with some pricing mechanism and billing mechanism, it will not last. It will just fade away. Nobody will maintain it. Furthermore, once there is a smart grid or a local grid built, and uh, the central grid is con connect to the local grid because it expands incrementally, then the question remains, uh, how is the interaction going to take place? How are, how are we gonna build the local production and versus the central production? So these are some important points to take in mind for the developing world. So just as a recommendation, so developments in smart grids are really depending on industry structure, regulatory models, and the energy policies. And uh, we believe smart grid investments should be incentivized. So if, a, if a utility is not incentivized to invest to in, uh, in, in some extra part, then they will not do so because it will just reduce their incomes then the strict capex uh, regulation would just support a smart meter investments. What, I'm, what we mean to say is that if you just give one big bunch of money for one term investments, they will just use it, utilities will just use it for that one meter that will be applied and to justify the investment. However, that doesn't mean efficient operation of the system. Because if you just put in a smart meter, it does not mean that the user is gonna interact with the grid. You need to do efficient pricing, time-based pricing, direct control, aggregators. So there, these are uh, actors and systems that ensure that there comes an interaction in place. So that's a very important point, which is many times forgotten. People think it's just an investment and then it works. No, it's also operational expenses which are, have to be paid. So um, this is also with, uh, in, with utilities with an incentive regulation. It's not just CapEx, but also OPEX expenses, which should be covered. So however, even we can not just give a big bunch of money to utilities, I believe, we need to also regulate in another way. So because smart grids mean a lot of data that is available to the utilities. So you need to make sure that the data is, is handled really in a private manner. And, and furthermore, that because demand response can sometimes not be competitively set, it should be fair that the price that is paid, for example, if you would reduce your production or increase your production, that it's a fair price that you're getting for, for this uh, behavior that you're doing, not, not just a small price that the utility uh, really benefits a lot from your uh, adjustment to the system. So therefore, a new regulatory system is needed for these, uh, for these new technologies. 
And uh, lastly, as uh, we said in the last part, in new area, developing world and even islands uh, which are disconnected, new technologies are really interesting also uh, from an uh, investment perspective. However, there is real need for also long-term business models. So smart to me means not just technically smart, it means e economically, business perspective and institutionally smart. Thank you so much for listening.